the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yeah, you well, look, look at it now. Say can't confront us in the spirit because Holy Ghost is there. So he gets us to operate in the flesh and he attacks us in our soulish area. To he attacks us in our flesh. And when I say flesh, I mean like our psyche hour. You know what I'm saying? The soulish area. He attacks us. He attacks us. He, yeah, he right? attacks his, uh, he attacks our soul. Soul. He attacks our, our flesh. He attacks our flesh. In a manifest, yeah. He can attack our souls in the sense that he can get us thinking the wrong way. And that's going to be carnal minded. And right. then he can attack us physically, which also has a lot to do with being carnal mind as well. But yeah. can he confront us on a spiritual level? Can he but do that soul, now that we are one with Christ? Can he can he come after us like that? But is the soul on a spiritual level? The soul is a spiritual level, right? But there is a difference man. between the soul and the spirit, right? Every man. I see, I see a difference. Which yeah, but is it you see a spiritual of Kill Jimmy or that? Is between the soul and between the soul and the spirit, there's a difference. In my but, they, but both of them are spiritual, right? They're both for the same quality of materials, I guess you would say. And that's why when we said that the word separates the soul from the spirit, like a marrow from the bone, it's like it's so closely associated. It's really surgical. It's a surgical process to to, to, to oh, distract yeah. one from the other. I believe, like when he like when we go back to two seven, when he breathed into his nostrils uh -huh. the breath of life, I think. You had two entities. You Come had on. the spirit of God, and you had the flesh, and those two combinations created a third yes. called the living soul. Hey, look out now! That Come third. on, is that new for you, man? Yeah. That revelation that you've been pondering. That. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I felt that. You know, I, you know, Lee mentioned something earlier, man. I'm gonna tell you something. That spiritual man by watching me, and I remember it when it came to me just as sure day when he said that. When I read it, and it's been years ago, but my my first reaction was, man. This is the deepest book since the Bible I've ever read. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is something serious, boy. Yeah, well, that spiritual man, that spiritual man is something serious. That's a, that's a serious book. Now, now I want to say this thing. Now, you realize that Satan is, is operates in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because he is a spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. That rascal still can get stuff on the line between. The, God got a connection with you. That joker can still run the interference on the line and get stuff into you. One of the verses oh. I wanted us to do a CITO, and this is a, this this is gonna be painful now. I went yeah. to a CIT where Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, yeah, Satan yeah. had desired to have you. Shift you like wheat. Yeah. He Shift said Satan, Satan has desired to have you. If they don't give nothing, I'm like. Is that, <laughs> I think I think that's uh let me see uh, that if, is uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34. Ain't but a few verses. Right. It said, it said, behold, Satan has desired to have you. That he may stick you with wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fails not. Mm. Amen. And when thou art converted, <clears throat> was that the right one? You said, you said that's true. I hate the wrong one. Well, it's a loop, right? Yeah, 22, 31. When thou art converted. When thou art converted. 31, okay. And faith is a function of the mind. mind. The soul. I'm in the wrong one. Luke. Luke Was it Luke 22? Yeah. Verse 31. 22, 31. Yeah, there he is right there. If that sift is almost like harvesting, or is cut, you know, cutting the wheat out of something, what that word sift? It's just separation. Separation. 
Let me well, see. You gotta, go, you gotta go look at the threshing floor. I think it's yeah, come on now. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> you gotta go look at how they how they how they process it once they got it harvested. Woo! Yes, sir. I, I was thinking it like the sheep, the guy takes a uh let me see what it says. Uh to sit down, that is set intransitively to sit down to settle continue set sit tarry dwell hover maybe that's i guess it must be hovering right or dwell in him well this is the case for a picture is worth a thousand words think so yeah yeah, if, yeah. If you've ever seen uh how in that time the jews yeah you ever heard him talking about that that uh i think it, it was david that went somewhere and, and there was a man on the threshing floor yeah 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 but on the threshing floor what they do is is that it's a process that allows you to separate the the, the grain the grain right. the gotcha yes sir yes yeah. sir it's a process of separation what you want to do sir. if it's barley or if it's wheat well, if it's anything that has a stalk, you have to separate the grain from the stalk. Gotcha. Come on. That's a lot of process to do in there. Yeah. They have, they have a hard, rocky, rock floor that they had a threshing tool that they would put on top. They put wheat in there, and they put their threshing tool on top of the wheat, and then they hook it to an ox, and then the ox will just drag it around. Hmm. And he just thresh it. It just thresh this, 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 this wheat. Until it was breaking, it would break the grains away from the stalk. Woo! And then they take the stalk, the stalk, and, and, and throw it to the side. And then all the, the chaff that were left, they would throw it up in there. And sometimes if the wind would blow, the wind would blow the chaff off to the side. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. It, all you got left is grain. Now, he said to, to, to Peter, this is what Satan want to do to you. Woo! He want to take you down through there, buddy. <laughs> now, he he want to crush you, grind you. <laughs> he wants to bring about a separation. Woo! You see, in John 17, Jesus told Peter that God had given those 12 men to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that he hadn't lost none of them except the son of perdition. And the only reason he was lost is so that the scripture could be fulfilled. Mm. He said, all that thou has given me, I have lost none. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But in this text, he said, Peter, huh. he wants you. <laughs> he wants you. He want to want to have you for himself. Woo. Woo. And so, I mean, just... this, this text is going to be a, uh, will be a good one for us to kind of get at because I believe that what he yeah. what he what he trying to do to Peter. Let's talk, let's talk. He, he trying to do to me. He doing to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only yeah. he just don't like Peter. Only like girl. all of us are tied to Jesus. Hey, Woo. He he don't care nothing right, about then, you. He, he, don't, he don't care nothing about you. He he just gonna take you. He wanna take okay. you. So he wanna you. separate okay. you. So you might see what how the enemy might God work to keep you from being fruitful. Yeah, I agree. That, yeah, and that's what happened. So that's what I'm thinking about in that parable when Jesus was explaining. So when he talked about the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, yes, and that's that's his way of trying to sift you, separate you. Yeah. Is is there any flesh left up in there? Woo! Is there any self still on the throne? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any place where he ain't surrendered yet? Yeah. Is there any place where he still got some stuff stuck up on the rug and hit all? That he don't want Jesus to know about. Woo! He just told him. He said, look here, boy. You ain't where you think you are now. Yeah. <laughs> I know you said some good things come out of your mouth, but I don't believe you can do what you say. Woo! You got some holes in your armor. <laughs> I'm like, I'll lay down my line for you. I tell you what, follow me. <laughs> follow me. Like the rich man, right? 
he said, oh, follow me into the courtyard when they apprehend me. Follow me in there where they go to put some pressure on you. And we'll see just how much you're willing to deny yourself. Woo! That's the, and that's the challenge of a believer. They think no, he's yeah. cussing and swearing. Self-denial. You know? And he said, but I said self-denial said, we just like, look, look, Peter was in self-denial. When Peter no. said that. No, he wasn't. He wasn't? He wasn't in self-denial. What he was? Because if he was in self-denial, he wouldn't have said, I don't know him. <laughs> he was in self-preservation. He was self-preservation. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, before that, he said, I will die for you. He yeah, said that. His, his, mom said that. Huh? his mouth said that. His heart didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, his heart right. Because Jesus said, before the cock crowed three times, you're going to die me twice. So two times, wasn't it? So I preached a sermon one time. God gave me this sermon called, The Peter in You. Woo! <laughs> God, God told Isaiah, these people honor me with their lips. Oh, Lord. But their hearts are far from me. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And, and, and that's how many times, how many people go to church on Sundays or even I tell you in fellowship, but their heart is not with them. I put my name in there. Lima can't honor me with his lips. Woo! <laughs> And all that law, I, a hymn writer, uh, song came to heart when, I, when we were talking to me about that. I, I thought singing that song, Fix Me, Jesus. Fix me. Fix me. <laughs> hey, hey, or maybe we have conditional lips, a conditional heart. Yes. Unconditional. But that's what we have is, but we, we really have conditional. We don't, we don't like unconditional, man. <laughs> we, 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 want, we want to leave. We don't like the word unconditional. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, baby, <laughs> unconditional is is that hundred percent yearly. Un unconditional says, "You mean ain't nothing in it for me?" <laughs> hey, Jim, hey, Jim. <laughs> that that's that's that that's that yearly we're talking about. That's it. All that's for Jesus, all for the kingdom, at your expense. Woo! How huh. yearly I surrender all. Let's, let's go at it. Let's go at it. Let's do it. That's why. Let's that's do it. That's why the road broad is the way that leads to destruction. The many there be that go in therein, but narrow is the gate, and straight is the way, and two there be that find it. He said few, few. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said few. I'm sorry. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said two. He said few. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, so, 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 so okay so so for a believer listening what are we saying what we want what are we trying to get to how they gonna how they gonna get there y'all ain't gonna make it don't say that don't say that Come on, <laughs> I, I Wait, like hey, hey hey bishop maybe we can go with the the rationale we said earlier about the 30. 60 and 100. 100 Amen, man. Your talents may be limited. Amen. Maybe man. most believers have one talent. One talent. And, and may he, may, he's not going to give you more until you show stewardship. What do you think? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thinking about inviting my wife to this thing, so y'all gonna have to. Uh... Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, hey. hey, you said we might have to. We we I think we stand in line here. <laughs> so, so when y'all start beat me up like y'all normally beat me up, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have some help. Amen, <laughs> amen, amen. But but so so we are talking the yearly, Jim. Let's go back to that yearly, in that that percentage of a 30, 60. And you surrender all. Most oh. of us, huh, yeah. How do we surrender all? Now, now hold on. Let's pray for that right now. 
Amen. <laughs> that's a good start. <laughs> now, that's a good that's start right now. That's now. weeping and wailing and crying out for God to Help pour us, Lord. the whole surrender in our heart. Help us, Lord. Follow, Help us. follow work on us. Help us, Lord. Make it to the place where we don't keep back nothing for ourselves. Help us, Lord. Man, oh. Listen, whatever it takes, no matter what the cause, no matter how painful, no matter how ugly. Help me. Help us, Lord. If you didn't want to pray that prayer. Help Woo! us, Lord. Hey. But that, that that is where a believer wants to get to, right? Yeah, I mean, really, we, we you know, I was saying the fact that when we bring, when we come into, and I think Jimmy said earlier, we all come with these conditional hearts. The, the heart has different conditions in it. Yeah. And the progression of moving from stony ground, as Brother Addison was saying, and, and, and unfortunately, he also said, there's a process of going back to stony ground or thorns. Because that's the challenge of a believer. He's going back to these, these challenges and what ground condition of his heart is. Yeah. James said, I'm let no man say when he is tempted, he is tempted of God. Yes, sir. But a man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to focus on what <laughs> our desires are. <laughs> and that's a challenge though, right? <laughs> to yield, to be fruitful, to surrender all, to surrender our desires that are forbidden. Forbidden desires, you said that one time before, it's called forbidden desires. So once you start using the word unconditional you have to start putting them for the everything yeah. now you start talking about unconditional availability Woo! that hurt right there eh? <laughs> you start talking about unconditional sacrifice that yeah unconditional. you're talking about giving now you got unconditional sacrificial giving <laughs> hey hey <laughs> That one. <laughs> Once you start talking about unconditional, that thing started to get serious in a hurry. It does. It does. But when you look at Jesus, it says that Isaiah said that that for the joy that was set before him, now he's he endured the cross. He endured the cross. Yes, sir. Now, now, I submit to you that, that that it wasn't talking about no joy in the cross. It was talking about he understood that if he took the cross, that it would bring joy to the Father's heart because it is the cross is God's meaning to get in the kingdom. Exactly. Well, in fact, I always, you know, I always had the vision. He looked at how it was going to affect the Father. <laughs> yeah. And vision, I really look at the fact he was looking at all of, of us coming into you know all those who come into the kingdom all that would all those back to those fruitfulness again the hundred four harvest which is what pleases the father anyway right you, you do think about that you are created in such a way that you can call the heart of god the father to rejoice yes sir Heaven, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know if you've ever really thought about that I don't know if you've ever really thought about the fact that uh -huh. it's about all the mess that you done done. It's about all the things that you've gone through and how the enemy used to have you in his possession and manipulate and use you and make you an enemy of God in your mind through wicked works, according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. That now God has done something to Christ Jesus that you can live in such a way now and make a choice and make a decision that calls the Father to rejoice. Mm. Oh, yeah. It said that when Stephen was being sacrificed, he said, I see the son of man standing. Jesus had them stood up. Stood up. Yeah. He yeah. said, I see him standing at the right hand of the Father. Woo. He's being stoned for, for doing that what the Spirit of God is leading him to do. And then he come back and said, Father, lay not this thing to their charge. Come on now. I met Jesus. Said, Jesus said, that's what I'm talking about, right? That's now. it. That's, that's it. Like, that look like me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go back and say, I gotta go check my family. I gotta go check my, my wife. I gotta no. go check. I gotta go back to my job. I gotta no, go be up. 
Matter of fact, you know, you know, I thought about that is that that kind of reminded me of that parable about the banquet. And you remember he invited people. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, no, but, but, but Ellen, before that, though, what? Remember he invited some other people. Yes, yeah, the ones that was still in the kingdom. Yeah. That was supposed to be in the kingdom. Anyway. They were supposed to have been in the kingdom. Yeah. And, and they all had reasons for not showing yeah. up. Yeah. Wow. But, but you see, brother, how there are not many wise, not many mighty, but God has chosen the weak things. Hmm. And God has chosen the things that are that are foolish and then they call her name. And the things that are despised. Yes, sir. He, so that so that nobody would ever get in God's face and go to talk about what I did. What I did. God said, look here, they have put you outside the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were waiting to be picked up by the trash. And Woo. I took you in. Woo! He told David, I took <clears> you <throat> from falling out of the sheep. Yes, sir. A lowly despised kind of a job. I took you from following the sheep and made you ruler over my people. He did. He took so that one. Talk about what you did. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I need for you to glorify the one <laughs> Woo. who exalted you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so to get the good ground, Elder, how do we get the good ground? <laughs> yeah, hang in there. <laughs> yeah, hang in there. And, and take the proof. <laughs> <laughs> I will not lie to anybody. I will not take this trip on my own. Yes, <laughs> I wouldn't put all this on me, but <laughs> or take this all off of me. I have that with you. But yeah, you just have to hang in there with him and let him take you where he's gonna take you. Hey, hey brother, Isaac, how you keep from going back to uh, bad ground? Renewing my mind. <laughs> okay. And and don't let me catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Because if I catch you sneaking around the bad ground, the bad house, come here, man. I know ain't none of my business. I know you grow, but come here, let me tell you something. And you I, know and, you ain't got no look, business. And, and I count you worthy of that task. <laughs> you know you ain't got no business doing what you're doing. Hey, and I expect hey, that I expect that from all y'all. Hey, man, uh, we all have permission to speak into my life. I have no problem with that. Don't, you all have permission. <laughs> Well, I, I have to go, gentlemen. Okay. Um, I got my, my son is is trying to tug at me, so. Amen. I, Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm truly enjoying this time out here with my grandkids, so. Amen. It's been a blessing. Yeah, you, ever go, you in California? I'm in Vegas right now. You in Vegas? Wow, Vegas. What time is it? On, you better not go down that strip. <laughs> It's a it's a nice it's a, it's beautiful colors and stuff out there. Man, <laughs> I, I I'm I'm not gonna go down and strip, but I'm gonna go to the strip. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of attractions out there. <laughs> Have you been out there already? No, I haven't done. I mean, I've been here enjoying my grandkids. I haven't left this this house except to go to the store. Okay. So right. I'm I'm just enjoying them, but I'm a. Uh, uh, one of my other sons came in from California, and so wow. he's always been talking about uh, not fishing for men, but fishing for fish. Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a passion that we always share together for well, all of my sons, but this uh -huh. one in particular. And he think he think he outgrown the the the, the master. Hey, so right. I gotta I gotta let him know a few things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love y'all, and I miss y'all. Uh, obviously, you see how early I had to get up to get in. Here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yes, man. sir. What time is it now? <laughs> it's uh, it's seven forty-one now. Woo! Hallelujah! Uh, but, he surrendered all to get up there. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward. So, is there a reference for a new CIT? And if it is, please text it to me. And so I can I can get in the word and have something to uh, to go for. Also, the uh, thread from yesterday was very interesting. Yeah, I sat back and watched y'all the whole time. I said, "Lord, well, to hold your peace." Just, just yeah, just, yeah. Just, 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 listen, I was I was finna jump in and say, "Hey, hold on." <laughs> yeah, look, I, I held back on my on my text for like about four hours. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, I meant to say, uh, um, 
did, did you? I, I didn't respond back to your part, but yes, that was a good point. It, it was because we're talking about saving the souls and, and uh, the condition of the souls when they come into the kingdom. Yeah. And like you just said, is sometimes we go back. This, you know, Elder, sometimes we go back to some of those conditions. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? A lot of cases we go back, back and forth in those conditions. And the question is, when we bring people into the body of Christ. Are uh, we expecting them to have a, those conditions squared away before they come in, or do we expect them to come in with bad conditions, hard well, conditions? Uh, Jesus, Jesus said, well, the worst is that Jesus died for us while we were yet in our sin. Yes, sir. So our expectation is that when we minister to people, we minister to them in their needs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the thing of it is that we all we must make I mean there's a, a a lethal awareness that they can't stay like that because they to destroy them so we it, it, it's not so much that you know i guess if sin wasn't wasn't a murderer even god wouldn't be mad about it but sin kills us it destroys us yeah. and it separates us from our father and when we're separated from the father man we were at the mercy of the devil the say would destroy you kill still destroys his part so it's like i don't know how i love them to take my kids out from from a bus is coming on you know what i'm saying it's right. bus. i snatch him i holler at him i scream i do whatever i gotta do to get them out of the way because of the urgency of the issue and i think that's what we're we have to somehow know the lot of spirit got to work to us to allow us to urgently address a lethal issue and and sin across the board across the board. um i mean lying, stealing, cheating, homosexuality, whatever it is, it's still, it's lethal. It's deadly. Yeah. And I do want to make sure people know that, I don't know if y'all knew it, that, uh, you know, uh, one of the members, uh, child is, uh, you know, uh, is, 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 uh, did, 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 so, yeah. so you just need to be aware that as a parent, the uh, uh ain't nobody exempt ain't nobody exempt bro <laughs> right and that person's heart is 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 always just like you if in the beginning you know you somebody said that you know my parent my mama prayed you know that song my mama prayed for me you know yeah and and and, and so therefore our hope and expectations never end despite what a mem a, fa a family member may you know be and that's the same thing as the body of Christ is that if somebody comes in the body because we want to come in the body of Christ, we got to have that patience and that prayer. And, and Jim, I think you was asking the question, what are the things we should do with any of body is that prayer, taking time if they want to listen, or at least keeping them under the words so they can, they can grow. And I think even like these forms, uh, these are good forms that allow people to, to grow in the things of God, if they're willing to participate in it. Uh, but I don't, I don't, those are the only tools we have. And the only person giving the increase, the only person that's really rothing or changing for anybody is God. That's that pruning part of it. <clears throat> and all I, all I can do is just, I, I won't put them, I guess we were saying that thread yesterday was that <laughs> I won't, you to the curb i won't stop you from leaving but i'll never kick you to the curb i i want you there, to there, there, there's something that it's so important to have a connection with the lord yeah you really got to know what he's saying you know i mean my my opinion on it ain't really important yeah it's, it's like what what does jesus need spoken to this person at this point what is he trying to say and how we want to say it right and try to allow him to minister to it because he knows that person hard he knows the break point he knows when they need to be scolded. He knows when they need to be, you know, exhorted. But we don't know that. You know, and I all think we take it upon ourselves to just, you know, judge or condemn another person or, 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 or even exhort them to continue on what they're doing. But uh, we have to really be careful of that because we don't have enough information to go on. Yeah. If, if he reveals it to us, then we can effectively go forward and say, this is what the Lord requires and what you think you should consider talk to Christ about this. This is what the Lord leave you to say. And don't say no more. Right. If, if God ain't leaving you to say nothing, just shut up. If you know you're speaking out of your flesh, be quiet. Yeah. Because 
we all have strong opinions about certain things. And some of them, I mean, some people hate folk that fornicated. Yeah, I mean.